Okay, and welcome to the second segment of Tech Field Day 22. Uh, I'm Rick Vanover, and just a moment ago, we set up the stage of Veeam's vision of being that most trusted provider of backup solutions that deliver cloud data management. I'm gonna show you the first of those that we're gonna show here for you today. I'm gonna to talk about some object storage enhancements. Great way to talk about the cloud. Now, a lot of people know about Veeam backup and replication. And here at Veeam, we do a lot of promotion for the next version. Veeam Availability Suite version 11, which is a combination of Veeam Backup and Replication and uh, Veeam 1 is due out soon, but where we are right now is in beta 2. <clears throat> so basically, we have special builds that we used at Veeam on, we have beta 1, we have beta 2, which is where we're at now. And then the time's gonna collapse a little bit. So we're very close to going to a release candidate and then a partner release. So we're very close to this, and that's what I'm actually going to show you here in a second. But there are three main things. There's a lot of little things, but three main top-level storylines that go with version 11. Continuous data protection, enhanced instant recovery for file servers. Yeah, that's right, an instant recovery of a file server. SQL and Oracle databases, that's pretty cool as well. And then what I'm going to talk about here today, enhanced object storage, specifically Glacier, Deep Archive and Azure Cool Archive. Now, I want to ask the delegates a question. So this is actually my only like substantive slide. Do you want to see the demo live or do you want me to play a video? I'm prepared for both. Always live. Always live. Okay. Yes. All right. I want to show you Veeam Backup repositories. Now, what is a Veeam Backup repository? I know that some of you are new to Veeam. So that is where backups go. Okay. That's a storage resource, and we can do that with any type of storage. We can have uh, NAS devices. I'm gonna talk about that secure Linux awesomeness down here at the bottom in a second. But those of you who are kind of paying attention to the topic of archive and cloud are seeing that we have two new Azure storage resources up here at the top. Azure Blob, which actually we already do. So think of that infinite storage. And I would remind everyone that at Cloud Field Day 5 and Tech Field Day 20, Anthony's done some great stuff there in previous tech field based sessions, but the one at the top, Blob Archive is new. Now I need to introduce you to a technology to make this work, and that's this thing called a scale out backup repository. Now, I've been, I'm glad we're not doing this in person because if we were, you guys would throw things at me. Now, if I was talking to an analyst, I would call the scale out backup repository a software defined at the management level, secondary storage system that's cloud ready. That's what I would call it. But basically what I wanna highlight here is if I look at the definition of this, I have this really cool kind of journey. Maybe I could even call it cloud data management. I'm putting backups on a performance tier, which is those NAS devices on premises. Pick a color, let's go with orange. Then I have this kind of infinite longer term storage called capacity. So that's Blob or S3 or IBM Cloud or S3 compatible storages or soon to be Google, which is this kind of unlimited storage. And then I have this new one, let's go with blue, because it's cool, right? You like that? And I've intentionally made it longer because my thought is I want a shorter amount of storage on the performance, high, high cost, high performance storage, but my most recent restore points there. I want this longer term, effectively infinite and lower cost storage on Blob, S3, those types of storages. And then I can go deep and cool into the archive. And that's what I like to call write once, read never, but never say never. We got to make an acronym for that. Now, a lot of this technology is already in place, but what I want to show you is that we are allowing these backups to be archived into Azure as well as Glacier's archive equivalent. But what we're doing is putting in what I like to call some cloud economic intelligence. So there's a, a barely, uh, you know, a safeguard, and maybe it's a better way to say this, right? And I've learned a lot about Azure storage and, um, as well as AWS, but we've got some logic, like only put the backups in this archive if they meet this minimum storage duration. Like there's this whole phenomena with Glacier and, and Azure Cool Archive that you have to basically commit to a certain amount of time. And we're not even gonna put it in there unless that is prescribed by the backup. So cool stuff, real smart stuff. Now, what I wanna highlight about this is that it's very easy to do. Um, I like to say Veeam is so difficult to use, said no one ever, and to verify that, find out how many people have the job 
Veeam administrator on LinkedIn. It's just not there. This product is very easy to use. When I look at how do I practically put backups in there, I'll just take any old backup and I just say, hey, put it there. And if I want to do things like PowerShell and scripting and you know, automated deployments, sure, yes, we can do that. But if I want to just install, click, click, go, I can do that as well. And the thought here is that I want to make it easy for organizations to lower their cost. And I'm going to fill this out a different way. So the thought here is, let's go with red because it's expensive. My on-premises disk resource storage might be that much. Let's go with um, let's go with orange. I like orange. If I'm going to put stuff up in the coal in the cloud, sorry, I might keep longer retention, lower cost, but not quite as low cost as say Glacier and the like. And then let's go blue for the cool of the storages. And if I can go long and deep for that long-term retention, I just have this performance capacity archive view right here in Veeam. So if I look, I'll say on premises, I've got you know some things, I've got some more things, and you see I have I have more retention, by the way, 83 restore points versus like single digits a second ago on prem up in blob storage. And then this archive, this is the long tail. I have two two archive restore points. So I have some weeklies that are going there. Really interesting way that we can put our backups up in the archive storages with transparency. And the funny thing is, is I can, if I wanted to, I've got some really cool options. One, if I needed to bring it back, right? Remember I said, write once, read never. I could take it out of that archive and put it into the capacity tier. And then the other thing I can do is I could make it, let's make it pink because Melissa likes pink. Let's prolongate the availability period. And what I mean by that is I might have said keep it for five years, but you know what? An, a matter has come up in my organization. Let's make it seven. Very easy, very easy to use. So now I, I do actually have just a, a couple moments here. I wanted to make sure that you had some time for a question. So I wanted to show you how easy it was to use archive storage in the upcoming release of Beam. And does anyone have any questions on that? Yeah, I have a question, uh, Rick. Um, yeah, nice. So when you're when you're looking at the uh, the tiers that you are presenting, the uh, object storage tier does it needs to be on premises? Can it be on the cloud as well? Uh, yeah, that middle tier, what I call the capacity tier, which is Veeam's object storage implementation, that can be IBM cloud object storage. It can be AWS S3, the public cloud. It can be Azure, but it also can be S3 compatible systems, Ceph. Uh, cloudy and um, a whole bunch more that I can't remember. Um, yeah, so any S3 compatible, we, we publish a list in our forums and our support, but uh, yes, it can be on-prem unified storages. I, I have a question too. Um, so um, if, you, if you do a backup like this, um, you have to select uh, the target storage that you want to use per backup or um, uh, because I, I just had the idea of I'm, I'm capable of defining a backup um, and backing it up to a fast storage first because I don't have the time to to write that much data to a very slow storage somewhere else. And then maybe it moves things around after retention time is reached. Um, but that's not what you were saying, right? It's uh, like you, right. you're defining it for a backup and then it has yeah. to go there. I did glance over that. So good catch, Jasper. And that, I would actually point you to the Cloud Field Day 5 and Tech Field Day 20. Anthony Spateri and my team did a really good job of explaining our logic. Um, and the thought here is that we have a very flexible policy. I could say anything older than two days goes to the cloud uh, and I could copy it or move it. And I even have some safeguards, Jasper, that say, hey, I'm approaching full on premises. Let me more aggressively move to the cloud, right? There's a lot of safeguards there. I'd really point you over to the TFD 20 and Cloud Field Day 5 content. Kind of like um, maybe do a, maybe maybe doing a recap. See if I make if I understand everything correctly. Um, how you guys have this set up is you write first to your on-premises storage, um, whatever that could be be uh, direct attached, what whatever your local very storage agnostic, policy yeah. is. It could be, it could be a, yeah, you guys have a, a large array of attachment um, ways to attach storage to the system. Then that will then be your, your policy engine move to an S3 compatible bucket. And then you have more logic from there that once it's in S3 target, move it to, to the archive tier. Is there, um, first, is that correct? When, when, how, how, I'm, how I'm thinking how it works. Mm -hmm. 
And then secondly, uh, is there a way to be right directly to an S3 compatible um, target that is in the public cloud? Not so much locally, but going directly to you know S3 and Amazon or something like that. I, I feel you, Stephen. So you first of all, you do understand the flow, that three-step. And if we were having this conversation at Tech Field Day 20 last year, it was just a two-step. We were at, you know, uh, on-premises storages and then object storages and then this new tier for that long-term, right, once read, never, but never say never tier. And you're right. You understand it correctly. But what you just hit on, Stephen, is the most popular request here that we've had once customers get this. And directionally, I can say that there will be a time, maybe on Tech Field Day, that I demo and show that uh, we're working on it, but I don't have a specific scope or timeline to share with you today, but it is something that I can confirm there is an active research project on. 